This is part two now of the revised and hopefully a little more advanced. Perhaps I should call this, perhaps I should have called my first one <laughs> kind of like Project Finance. If you were in the U.S., you'd say 101 instead of 201 or something like that. This is going to show you how the... Uh, uh, we're going to, after we get the timelines, don't put any money. I keep on saying, no money, no money, no money. How does the project work? I looked at a model, a wind farm model. I couldn't find the, how much energy production there was anywhere in the model because they put it in some fancy formula. Unbelievable, really. You've got to start with how many oil reserves you have, how many... You know, how much oil production you have, how much traffic you have, how much whatever, how many people are taking the, the, the railway system, all of that, all right? Now, I'm going to, okay, this just restates what, what, it, what I just said, okay? Now, there could be, and I'm not saying, okay, we can always get it into a, a few lines. I'm not that ridiculous. There can be a whole lot of level of detail uh, with these. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back and do something a little more advanced. Okay, so we're, this is just like the last video where if you feel like you're really advanced and don't need to see this, I'm trying to just give you a little bit extra. Actually, I think an advanced thing in getting these volumes right is counting how many hours you have and then figure out it, figuring out when you have your major overhauls based on the number of hours or the amount of time. And then you have to kind of take the project out of service for a while and put all of that timing in in your capacity factor. Now, I, I'm going to do something much simpler here. All I said was I set it up so we have a capacity that actually gets to 1,000 by the COD, then goes down no... Uh, um, degradation, degradation, no degradation here, because whatever. And But we have some pre-commercial operating cash flows. I want to show you the accounting for the pre-commercial operating cash flows and show you some nuanced issues with those. So I put some, some that we have a little bit of a capacity before we start, so I suppose... Uh, uh, I hope this is the this is the financial close date, and then we have some. We go ten months out, and we start to get a little capacity. Eight months after that, and by the COD date, which is here, these are just E date functions. We get some, and then we have some uh, uh, capacity. Now, in this one that says complete, I think I put all the capacity in, so you don't. With that just steps up, and that's just the lookup function. I hope you're not using match index anymore. Here, here's the lookup function. So we're going to go through that. But for you advanced people, what you might want to do is you might want to say, oh, no, 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 let's gradually get this from 40 to 60. And then let's hold it 60. And then let's gradually go up and gradually go up. And then let's gradually go up again. We might want to use an interpolate function. And I've talked about these interpolate functions a lot. For me, it's almost uh, one of the big things in the file, because I look on the internet and see, how do you do interpolate? Some guy wants to charge you some money, and Excel doesn't have an interpolate function. So in this case, I'm going to go to the Google Drive, and I'm going to go to chapter number one, and in chapter number one, I'm going to go to Excel Utilities, and such a, it's such a common kind of thing, I hope, I put it just in in kind of the whatever, the regular Excel utilities directory, whatever we call those things now, okay? And then you press alternate F8. Now, you could be fancy and do some sort of... Uh, um, I'm going to call these lookup functions. Uh, if you put functions in your macros... Uh, functions in your VBA, rather. I better save this. Uh, if you put functions in your VBA, you can't find them easily. So I always put a little title on the top, a little subroutine. And then we have the function for interpolate lookup, 
and I put a little added thing with an optional on-off switch. So I'm very, very afraid that these things, this, this lookup thing, might slow us down. So I'm going to show you kind of how to put a little on-off switch. So you control A, control C. Then you go back to your uh, file. Now what I did here, in a, uh, and then you press Alt F8 in your file, and hopefully you have it on this workbook. I'm sure there's a way to automatically get it to say this workbook. I should know that. And then you press Edit, and I go all the way to the top to insert a line. The reason I go all the way to the top to insert a line and, uh, and put this in is that I want this option base one at the top. This is, if you have an array, it's technical, but if you have an array, then it does this. And this one, basically, if you want to really look up, it's not that long a function, but one of them, it goes to kind of the starting point, to the middle point, to the end, and it redoes the lookup function, essentially, and I also had a little bit of trouble using the entire line. So if I want to use the lookup function, I can put lookup, I mean, I'll put interpolate, and it finds it. And I'll put interpolate lookup. Now, if you press Shift F3, it gives you the little things. And this one's an optional one. Notice the optional one has, has it has false. So the lookup value is just like our old, a regular old lookup function. It's always the, it's almost always going to be the start date. Okay, and then the lookup series, we can make an entire line. And I'm going to make that the entire line of the uh, uh, capacity factors. Okay. And then we put the next one, which is the, the capacity utilization. And then I press OK. And I hope it didn't take too long. And then I press Shift-Control-R. And I get zero, and then it gives me kind of a gradual increase. Now, why don't I, if I had just used regular old lookup, I'll put capacity utilization just with uh, with lookup. And, and then I'm going to make a capacity utilization with uh, with uh, linear. Uh, interpolation. So what this does is this one figures out a growth rate and if you're in between, so I think we started at some number, we started at 40, it just gradually figures out what the compound growth rate is necessary to get you to 60. Another way to do it would be to just take the difference and kind of divide it equally. So if we use just regular old lookup, we put equal lookup we go up to the start date, which you always have in sight. You go up to your assumptions, find how you set up the assumptions appropriately, put a comma, and put this in. And I think in my first video, I hope that I demonstrated, I hope you believe that this method is faster or just as fast as match an index. And you noticed what it does is it just kind of steps up and steps down. And then if you put it... Uh, with linear, then you put equal interpolate again, and it finds all this stuff. And then we don't really, we can remember what to do. We put the same thing here, and you put the uh, uh, this one in, and then the whole line again. I just said this one instead of saying the whole line. Okay. And, uh oh. I didn't make an optional thing. I've got to go back and fix that. Excuse me for, for, for that last little thing. Okay, in this one, the linear, uh, it starts with the... If it has a zero, it, it, it can interpolate in a zero, and sometimes you want that, so I left that in. I'm sorry to say that. And then you can kind of see it gives you a little bit of a different answer, and then we held it at 60 and then we go up to 60, and so you can compare these uh, lookup and interpolate lookup, and that last thing that I'm embarrassed that I made a mistake on, if you put comma false, then it just, it just switches it off, and it doesn't take any time. Just in case these things really take time, you can switch, I made a thing, you can switch them off. So this one, 
where I didn't put it as an optional uh, uh, variable. Uh, okay, and I'm going to go and fix that right now. This one, then when we put it off, it just, it takes zero time. It doesn't go through and recalculate, and it just saves a whole lot of time. So that's the lookup. So now if you're all advanced, you can turn off this. And I'm going to talk a tiny little bit about the theory. Now, the level of details, you can have 25 sheets that go through every traffic, every car, every pencil you have, and all that. Not pencil. Well, quantity of pencils, yes. Every little thing. They can be very, very detailed. But you want to make sure and get the capacity and the volumes to a central sheet because you're going to use that to whatever you need to compute the prices and the costs. You need any kind of volumes to compute the variable cost and the fixed cost and the prices you need in your core sheet. So this detail is a little bit due. Now, here's the, la uh, the, the other thing. Let's say it's a wind farm and you have a P50 and a P90. There's a little kind of exception to this. Uh, if you have a, a, a P50 and a P90, it, uh, it, you could say, why don't we, right here on the inputs, where are my inputs, please? This is uh, capacity and volumes. I might want to put capacity utilization in the P90 and the P50 and all that. You might want to do that only, 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 only if... You have to run different debt scenarios, but generally every single thing, and I made this mistake way, way too much, anything, any sensitivity put in a different page. Don't mix up and put different sensitivities with this one perhaps exception that I just said in this page. Put the sensitivities, you're going to insert Shift F11, and you're going to put all the sensitivities in here. So. So we could have, and, and we're going to talk about how to structure these sensitivities because I see them so badly done. Okay. Oh, oh no. Okay, there's already another sheet there. Whatever. And, and we'll put capacity utilization, and we'll have all our different scenarios, base case, and the different scenarios down here, and then we'll put a little index function, take this from here, and, and feed it back into the base sheet. Okay? Everything. Except only one exception if you need two different debt sizing alternatives, which I'll come to a lot later in this revised course. Okay? Enough. Maybe I went overboard on this one. Okay. So I, 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 when you set up assumptions, you've got to understand whether assumptions are a function of the age of the project or a calendar year. If they're an age of the project, if they're a function like you have a decline rate or uh, that depends on the age or you have a maintenance that depends on the age, then put the assumptions in with the dates, just like I showed you. Start with a COD date. Don't make it so, you know, you have to manually do something. And if you have contracts that end after the COD date, figure out, correspond that to the dates and use the opening, the beginning date. Okay. And here's what I've already kind of emphasized. Do not use V lookup or H lookup. Use regular old lookup. It's faster. It doesn't take more time. It doesn't slow down the model. It doesn't make the model heavy. Blah, blah, blah. I kind of proved it to you. And that's where you kind of generally, this is one with the year. So you put an equal lookup down here and you click on the year first and then correspond a year to a column and then just copy it across. Okay, and then I said, well, get the interpolate lookup function and try to put that in when you have these. And here's some bad examples. Let's go through some bad examples. Here's this thing that irritates me, sorry. When we have some things that are in, I don't know, these were the materials, and then suddenly you went to the debt to the equity and suddenly went back to the generation. The inputs should be in the same order. And then you have some other inputs over on the side, Put all the inputs in one column. Don't make somebody, the poor users go back and forth and try to search for the inputs. Put all the inputs in a logical place, please. 
And, you know, here's a good, oh, this guy is so smart, he used index match, index match, and this is a long formula. The lookup function is so much simpler. Here's one, you know, you put the P and L statement right away in a forecast, oh my gosh, and, you know, you might have some forecast and actual, always have a switch. It's the most valuable switch you can have for forecast and actuals. And what else do I have here? This is another one, I think, where we put we go from, suddenly we go to the de depreciation data immediately. We have some heating values or something here. We go immediately from the dates to this, and where's the rest of the, how the project operates? Where's the capacity? Where's all the stuff that you have? You need to get the capacity and the, the, the barrels or the whatever in there first. Oh, I guess I have another one. And this, oh, this is one where I couldn't even find. Here's the monthly revenue. This is the one I was really moaning about. I couldn't even find where the, the production was. I don't know what it is. Okay, so now you're going to do it. The best thing, again, turn off the video. This shouldn't take very long. This one should be kind of a, a, a quick one. Okay, so what we're going to do is this time, again, I am going to, on this one, it says physical, I called it physical, and I put no titles in here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put some titles in. In other cases, I'm just going to fill in the formulas. So we start, the rest of our assumptions would be following here. There'd be a big, long set of assumptions, and then you start with operations or something. And this is uh, I'll put in, in in the core model. Now, it if you have uh, if you have some big sheets, make the sheets go to the assumptions or the sensitivity page. Don't make these big sheets go down here to the bottom. Okay, and then let's put the capacity in first. And the way I did the capacity is. Very often, you would just multiply the capacity by the operation switch. But this time, I said we have some pre-operation capacity. In fact, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to put pre-operation capacity. Right. Okay, and then, and then this time, I'm going to just say we're going to use a lookup. You know, I, I don't know quite how to document this when, when we need to look up. Maybe somebody has a, a much better suggestion. And then you put look up, tab. You always look up on the 1 January, and then you make sure these dates correspond to the kind of dates you have here. And then you put a comma here, no F4 is necessary. And then you close the bracket and you multiply it by the pre-COD switch because I said, ah, oh, that's pre-COD. Shift Control One, Shift Control R. It just goes, looks up to the top. So you have to press Shift Control R again, and we start getting our capacity, and it just steps up and it goes to zero. And that is almost too long a formula. But if you only use lookup and you explain to your users this lookup is pretty easy. You just have to click that, 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 it's okay. And then we take put post operation uh, capacity. Let's just illustrate how, how we do this with the, uh, hmm. well, I, I'm going to use the lookup again. Okay. Uh, we could have, if we just had 1,000, if it was really easy, we'd just multiply that by the, True fit, <laughs> true fault switch. So we click on this one. You go up to the date. You go up and find the uh, 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 dates you input. Put the capacity of the project in, and just to show you why you did the. Now we multiply that by the operation switch. No F4s at all here. No F4s at all. Shift Control 1, Shift Control R. And then, if you want, you can press Shift Control uh, uh, right arrow, not Shift Control R. Be careful, Shift Control R. There is a Shift Control S that undoes the Shift Control R. And then you press Alt equal, and it, it uh, better give you a, a, a sum of the whole thing. Okay, so that's our, our total capacity. Now, I don't. Uh, I don't know if I've emphasized enough. If you 
want to, I'm just pressing control up and control down. That's why we did this, uh, and it's also a nice way to get the, the colors a little bit different and the format a little bit different. And then I have a, a, a uh, format, but if you want to format an underline, let's say you want to format an underline, first press shift control M to get, to get our little thing here. And I assume you have the developer tab. I assume you have this developer tab. And then you just uh, uh, record a macro, and I'm going to call it underline. And then I'm going to make this perhaps a, a G macro. I'll just press a, a small G. I hope I don't have that somewhere. And then I just, while you don't are not moving it at all, you just put your you know, whatever you would like. So you just make your own shortcut keys. Okay, and then you stop recording the macro. You make sure that you haven't put anything else in there. Shift, control, right arrow twice, control G, and you've got your own, you've got your own shortcut key. And now let's go, and we're going to redo the capacity factor. This could be an airplane. How many seats you have? For your flight, or how many seats were occupied during the day if the if the if the airplane was uh, on the ground for a while, or how many were in the year? You know, you could do it all all sorts of different ways. Okay, so I just put the capacity factor in, and this time, remember, I'm going to do the three kind of things. And just a minute, I'm going to go and fix that that thing I did wrong. What I had to do is put a little optional statement. If you're really into this, uh, using these user-defined functions, I had to put that into the. So I'm going to make a step change in the capacity factor, and then I'm going to make a lookup, an interpolation uh, with compound growth, and then I'm going to make. Uh, interpolation, a linear interpolation. Now remember, if we we didn't have, I, I, I think I should have put financial close here, remember how we set the assumptions up. I just said 10 months after, 8 months after that, and then we're at the COD. Here's the e-date function. It always uses the beginning of the month, all was the beginning of the month, all was the beginning of the month, this is just the COD, and then this is the, just the end of your life, the RIP date, you know, and then I have the same sort of dates, but then I put a whole bunch of more dates in between, I, I switched it by two years, so I put um, multiplied by 12, you know, some people would object to that and put the months in the year as a variable and put a range name in it and all that, good for you if you do that. Okay, and this is the decommissioning date again, and maybe I should have put this date here as the COD date. So we have some pre-COD dates here. And this is our financial close. And when you set up these assumptions, if you use the lookup or even the match and index or even the lookup, you need to put kind of you need to start at the very beginning date of the whole model. I didn't emphasize that one enough. So this is the start of the model. Uh, and, and I guess I'm going to erase all this. Well, maybe I'll leave that stuff in when I erase it. So if we just do the step changes, we just type look up again. This is just an exercise in look up. You go to the top of the model and you then you click on the, the whole date line and then you click on the whole capacity utilization line. Is that okay? Why should I ask? Is that okay? How are you going to answer me? Dick. Shift Control P is just a little macro I have, kind of like that one we just looked at. So this says, okay, this is where we first start. That's our first uh, starting date, 1 July 20. And if we go up and look at this 1 July 20, that's when it started. And then if I have this interpolation now, remember I, I already read this in, so I put interpolate, and somehow it finds this. Well, that's not that surprising to find that. I just called it interpolate lookup. Perhaps I, maybe my problem is I don't have a good enough name for this. So I put interpolate lookup. 
and then we go to the date, and then we do the same thing, go up to the assumptions, click on that date afterwards, and click on this one, and then you can put an optional variable at the end. If you don't put an optional variable, it'll, it'll assume you just want to go ahead and make the calculation. So, so this is where, again, I'm re-kind of doing it, but it gradually goes up and down. And if we want a linear interpolation, and remember, so here's our optional, if I put false in here again at the very end, shift control r and then I, it, it just switches it off, and then the, there's no time taken when you uh, run the function. It doesn't slow you down at all. Okay, and then we can put interpolate again, but this time put linear, and I'm redoing this, excuse me for being a little bit repetitive, but this was kind of the tricky bit. And then you put the same thing. Now, the, the, when I did that in the introductory part of this video, it blew up when I did this. I just fixed that by putting the final little thing as an optional variable. Now, it does, this linear one has some capacity factors, but we don't have any capacity, so who really cares? And then I'm going to put this one back to true. <sighs> oh, I think I didn't copy this across. I hope. Shift control R. I hate it when I make mistakes like this. Okay, this is fine. And, you know, I, let's do one more thing. Let's say a method for... Um, uh, capacity utilization method. And I suppose I'm going to just put uh, number, code. And this could be one, two, or three. We could use choose or index, but this is a good example. I'm going to put that we have one. And we could even put, uh, we can even go to a simple data validation. I hope you, you know, are not impressed with this. Where, <laughs> where is the data validation? Oh, how, how, how embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> Alt L. Okay. And then we can only make it go, we can make a list of values and have it go either one, two, or three. All right, so we can only, that's, and the, you know, so if, huh, and I suppose this is horrible form, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's do it. Let's make a choose command that I hardly ever use, but the a choose it's a lot better than an if statement. If this is one, we'll put, uh, uh, what did we call it? This is a step. If it's two, we'll put it as a, a, a interpolate with growth. And if it's three, we'll put it interpolate linear. Okay? Uh-oh. And uh, I looks like I have too many gimmies there. So let's put it as here. And what we can do now is, is I suppose, um, I was going to use the lookup function again, but uh, yes, let's make this up here. Let's just call this method one this method th two, this method three, and then we'll have final capacity factor. Uh, okay, and we put an equal sign and we put another lookup, just like we did before. This is just showing you, you, you know, you, you kind of, you will look up on this one and then look up this one down here and press enter, and that's all we do. So this gives you number two. You don't have to have a, that's a little confusing, but you don't have to have a second part of that lookup. You know, you have the three methods. 
and we can even take our little uh, thing here. And then we just put equal index. And the index I haven't gone through with you. I'm going to do that much, 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 much more. But it takes an area. It should be named select function. It shouldn't be named index. That's the only. It says select based on a row or a column number. And then you just press F4 over here. And that's not really very exciting, but uh, you can get your different methods. And finally, we try to be transparent. And, oh no, I just, somebody, just a... Okay, so this last thing, frankly, I don't even know is a good idea to put in there, but whatever. And then the final thing, let's just put the, the volumes, uh, volumes produced. And, and we should always put what kind of units th these are. This is a some kind of percentage. Um, and I'm not, and this is, maybe this is tons or something. I, I don't know what we called it. Units. Uh -huh. Okay. And if the capacity, uh, no, I don't know if I put the, capacity in as per day, then we'd have to multiply the capacity per day by the capacity factor. So let's say it was days. It says is it says up here this is the uh, units per day, so we better get that right. So I would, to be very transparent, again, I would put the days here. Okay. And we already kind of computed those, I hope, up at the top, or not. I didn't, so remember that was the uh, uh, end date minus the begin date plus one. Okay, and then we take our capacity factor, multiply it by the days we have in the period, and multiply it by our capacity. Shift control one, perhaps, and remember uh, shift control G, no, just control G. Okay, and then we're, we're finished with this, and uh, now we have the basis for computing our prices, which could be on a capacity basis or a volume basis. This is this whole business in project finance of output-based projects or capacity or availability based projects. We could compute fixed costs and variable costs, but we obviously need these basic things to get our our model started. And uh, I think that's enough.